Hey Crawford, my name is Mrs. Blackman and I am the seventh grade guidance counselor here at Crawford and we are so excited to get the year started. This year at Crawford, we will be using restorative practices to help us build community. You will learn more about it this week, but basically it helps us focus on how we contribute to our community and how choices that we make have an impact on each other. By reading this book, Seed Folks, we will practice restorative activities called circles. Circles teach us to listen respectfully and learn to value each other's opinions and thoughts and feelings. Teachers will work with you to establish circle expectations after we read our chapter together. So let's get to the book. The first chapter is about Kim. I stood before our family altar. It was dawn. No one else in the apartment was awake. I stared at my father's photograph, his thin face, stern, lips latched tight, his eyes peering permanently to the right. I was nine years old and still hoped that perhaps his eyes might move, might notice me. The candles and the incense sticks lit the day before the mark of his death anniversary. The rice and meat offered him were gone. After the evening feast past midnight, I had been wakened by my mother's crying. My oldest sister had joined in. My own tears had then come as well, but for a different reason. I turned from the altar, tiptoed to the kitchen, and quietly drew a spoon from a drawer. I filled my lunch thermos with water and reached into our jar of dried lima beans. Then I walked outside to the street. The sidewalk was completely empty. It was Sunday, early in April. An icy wind teetered the trash cans and turned my cheeks to marble. In Vietnam, we had no weather like that. Here in Cleveland, people call it spring. I walked half a block, then crossed the street and reached the vacant lot. I stood tall and scouted no one was sleeping on the old couch in the middle. I'd never entered the lot before or wanted to. I did so picking my way between tires and trash bags. I nearly stepped on two rats gnawing and froze. Then I told myself that I must show my bravery. I continued farther and chose a spot from the sidewalk and hidden from view by a rusty refrigerator. I had to keep my project safe. I took out my spoon and began to dig. The snow had melted, but the ground was hard. After much work, I finished one hole, then a second, then a third. I thought about how my mother and sisters remembered my father, how they knew his face from every angle and held their fingers and feel of his hands. I had no such memories to cry over. I had been born eight months after he had died. Worse, he had no memories of me. When his spirit hovered over our altar, did it even know who I was? I dug six holes. All of his life in Vietnam, my father had been a farmer. Here, our apartment house had no yard, but in that vacant lot, he would see me. He would watch my beans break ground and spread and would notice with pleasure their pods growing plump. He would see my patience and my hard work. I would show him that I could raise plants as he had. I would show him that I was his daughter. My class had sprouted lima beans in paper cups the year before. Now I placed a bean in each of the holes. I covered them up, pressing the soil down firmly with my fingertips. I opened my thermos and watered them all, and I vowed to myself, that those beans would thrive. At this time, your teachers will work with you to move into a circle and discuss um, some topics related to the Seed Folks book and building our community.